Hi, everyone. If you're like me, you probably have a hundred or more plugins. And I've only been running my home studio for about a year. So most of these plugins, I don't know, you know what they do, right? So I wanted to take a more educated approach to trying to figure out what these things do. So I came up with a method of using the tone generator in Reaper, or you can use whatever DAW you have, and then running those tones through different plugins to actually see what the effect is, to see what they do. And I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to show you how I do that. So I've been learning all about the different plugins uh, that I have and the effect they have on different sounds. So we could see over here in the DAW, um, I'm using Reaper. I've got this voiceover track. That's a track we're listening to now. So you can ignore that track. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a track for my reference tone. So I'm going to do, the goal here is to create a reference track that has tones, start and stop, different volumes of it, and to apply effects to that track to see what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new track called Reference. And then what I want to do, I'm going to bring the volume all the way down because it's going to get crazy. So I'm going to, what I want to do is I want to add a tone generator on the input. I don't want it on the output. I want it on the input. So I'm going to create a tone generator here. And you can see from the tone generator by default, it records at 440, which is an A, right? So it works out pretty well. So what I can do right away is I'm going to record this track. So I'm going to press record and you can see I get that tone. And what I want to do is I want to change the volume, you know, to be minus 20 because I want to get it at different volumes. Oh, that's a negative of a negative. That's positive. So I want negative 20, negative 30, do a negative 40 here just for fun. We're going to, uh, we're going to do 10 again, and we're going to do a couple of hits. All right. We're going to save that. So I don't need this error up here. So let's just take this. This is what we really care about. I'm going to cut out some of this middle bit for fun. Bring that back together. I'm just going to glue it together so it's one. All right, great. So now I have my reference track. I can remove that. I don't need it anymore. So now I need an output track. So I'm going to create a new track. I'm going to call it output. And this is going to be the track that actually records the effect of the different plugins we use. Because Reaper is awesome, I want to send the output from reference track to the output. So I just drag this over here. How cool is that? And I also don't want this reference output to go out to mains. So I click this, deselect that. Now, if I were to just play, I don't get anything because I got to bring the reference volume up. And now you can start to hear, you can hear that volume now. Let's turn it up a little bit here. Um, so we're actually getting that. So you can hear the output. And you can hear, like, if I mute this, you don't get anything. If I mute the track, you don't get anything. If I mute this one, you don't get any output. That's how it works. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So now what I want to do, I want to be able to record my test. 
So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I record the output. It's a mono signal, uh, recording mono plugins is what I want to do. So now I've got that. Now let's add a plugin. Now let's just do a gate, an easy gate. So now what we're going to look at, we've got the gate over here, we've got some output. You can see like, oh, maybe we don't want the gate to happen, right? So you can kind of play around. You can see where the gate works at different volume levels. Okay, so now let's run a test. Pick that out. Uh, because I want to record multiple tests, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on looping. This is what I do with all my plugins. Um, and I also record time selection auto punch because I want to record multiple takes of I might want to do different things on a test. So let's just let's just go for it. It's going to start here. And you can see the first thing that happens is we get the tone. Tone drops down. So that's the first loop. So now we want to see what this gate does. All right, we've got a gate volume there. So because the gate is above the threshold, we've just stepped on this signal. But what about if we do a loop there? So you can see the signals coming through. The main signal's there, but there's nothing in the reference track. But you'll see this time we were below that first threshold, but above this, we we're the gate allowed this, but didn't allow that. So let's we can go this. Do we can do this one again? Now let's just stop, save all that. All right. I don't need this track. We're gonna make this one smaller, make this bigger. We can kind of see, once we zoom in on these things, we can kind of see what's going on. See how this has this little tail here? What was that about? So you can see this has a 100 millisecond release. So one of the things you'll notice, I'm just going to crop to this track. So one of the things you'll notice when you zoom in on this, that's about 100 milliseconds, right? You look at the length. It's like 0.95. Probably goes out a little bit longer. So that's 100 milliseconds. So that's the release time for once the gate closes. It's going to release that down over over 100 milliseconds. So it's a pretty cool like, little feature where you can do this. And you can do this with any plugin. Um, I do it on reverbs. I do it on gates. Like if you want to learn the, if you really want to learn the difference between a gate and, and, an, and an expander, this is like the stuff you need to do. Uh, but it's really useful to test all your plugins to see what they do. Like you can see what what a what a kick plugin. You can test the different here's a here's an interesting one. Let's do um, the kick gate on this one. So I'm just gonna do this loop here. And let's get it. and get that. Now let's do something that's a little bit below the gate. All right, 
So let's take a look, see what that looks like. This is the one we want to look at. So we can get rid of this one. Let's delete that take. These are the same pretty much. Delete that take. Then you can kind of see what the reference take looks like to your actual take. So this is what the reference looks like. So here we're getting that I made the adjustment here. So here you can see you're getting it only at the front, right? And you're getting this tail here. It's closed down, but it's right at the front. So it only opens up right at the front and opens up really sharp. And then it closes down. Uh, so this is what that kick preset does. You know, and that becomes really clear when you see what it does, like the pre-open, the release is 49 milliseconds. I could zoom in and you could see that that's 49 milliseconds, but it, it's only going to hold for about 80 milliseconds. So it's a, it's a really cool tool. That's 80 milliseconds, about eight. So the kick only holds for about 80 milliseconds right there. And that's what that hold time is. And then the release is 49 milliseconds. So that we can see that over here. That's going to be around 49. If I could get the things just right, you can see it's 49 milliseconds. But it's a great way to test your plugins. You can do this with reverb plugins. A lot of the analog modeled gear does really weird things. Uh, and it's really interesting to see what it does. Um, I do this with compressors and gates and reverbs, and uh, it's it's a really cool like little thing to see what to actually determine what your plugins are doing. So hope you found this helpful, useful. Um, it's great using the tone generator to be able to test your plugins and see what they actually do. Uh, then you have a better understanding of when you hear something. Like, hey, I need to add a gate. I need to add reverb. Like, what do these parameters do? Uh, it's really helpful. It's really helped me a lot. I hope you find it helpful too. If you found this video useful, please subscribe, uh, like the video, and let me know what you think. All right. Thanks. Bye.